Now let's talk about this film. I want to I want to run the preview, but Cameron, you've probably seen it around. Uh, a beautiful film called Mass of the Ages, and it's uh, I guess is it fair to call it a documentary? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a doc. Why don't you tell them? It's a documentary about. Well, it's a documentary about the Latin Mass, and it draws the connection between worship and belief. Lex orandi, lex credendi. So it's not done yet. That's why we're we're uh, you know promoting it right now, and uh, we plan on getting the best experts we can, going to the the most beautiful locations, filming the Mass, the Latin Mass with the best we have like it deserves a professional quality production you know a cinematic production so it's going to be a beautiful representation of the latin mass it's going to use experts and evidence and real stories to draw the connection between lex Rondi, lex credendi beautiful well let's go ahead and run that clip sound good Yep. A new report from the Pew Research Center shows that the percentage of Americans... Only 10% of, percent of Catholics under God. the age of 30, they, they go to Mass regularly. Only 50% of the priests that she had in 1970. Seven in ten Catholics believe the consecrated bread and wine at Mass are merely symbols. The Mass, which is the engine that drives the church, well, the, the church is sputtering today. Well, I helped to get... A mass started here in Dayton. This is my workroom. I've been doing this for 40 years. We had 150 people there maybe four years ago, and we're now up to over 400. My gosh, so many young families. The fact is the Catholic Church has evangelized the world. It's converted nations, it's converted continents to Christ. And so we want to say, how did we do that? The Church has always believed that the way we worship, how we worship, impacts what we believe. Everything the Church is doing is to, to emphasize that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our entire Catholic life. And so everything we do at Mass is meant to show the greatest possible reverence for and attention to that Holy Sacrament. We want to try to remind the people that you're ultimately destined for this heavenly liturgy, and we want to get a glimpse of it here on earth. It's like, I'm sure like you, you know, you walked in and go, oh my gosh, I didn't know this existed. I mean, for the guy who's given you everything, you want to give everything back to him. But the great thing is when you do that, there's this corollary benefit that you then receive more. We need to go to the next level when it comes to capturing the aesthetic of the traditional Latin Mass. There's so much beauty, and now we see there's there's gorgeous churches, there's beautiful altars, there's so many, I mean, priests who have been fighting in the trenches for decades, lay people, this generation of people who were preserving the traditional Latin Mass in the late 70s, early 80s, when there's you know, 30 people meeting in a in a hotel banquet room, keeping the Latin Mass alive. And now in 2020, you know, there's there's almost a traditional Latin Mass in every major city in the United States, at least. And in Europe, it's growing. We're just we're seeing this renaissance. And I think, Cameron, you're, you're right on point here. Now is the time to capture the beauty and glory of it and make it mainstream. Yep, that's right. You, yeah, there's so many... The majority of Catholics are still attending the Novus Ordo, and they're not the Catholics who are following all the trad websites. Right. They're 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 in a sense comfortable with you know their Sunday worship, and there's a there's a lot that needs to be unspooled in regards to like the current Mass experienced on Sunday, and what the Mass should be, and the mm -hmm. the Mass of the ages. You know, even even Vatican II's text versus its disastrous implementation versus its priests aren't even following rubrics in some some cases. Um, so 
that's that's just the experience right now of the majority of Catholics, yeah. even faithful Catholics who go go to mass. So so the goal is to to reach them with a beautiful, convincing documentary, so that millions of Catholics will start attending the Latin mass, so that thousands of priests, diocesan priests, will start celebrating the Latin mass. Um, a film is the kind of thing that can really be a catalyst for all this, all this stuff. And a documentary especially ties together story and investigation. So when you tell people stories, it makes people put their guards down. You know, when you're on Twitter, you have your, you're ready to fight. You have your guard up. Like you want, you're, you're almost never convincing someone on Twitter. You know, they might, you might plant a seed or whatever, but they have their guard up. Well, when you're watching a film um, and you're hearing someone's story, your guard is down and you're accepting kind of what they're saying. When when someone is open to the evidence, that's when we're going to bring in the heavy hitters, um, the, the people who can you know draw the connection very clearly between Lex Arandi, Lex Credendi. And a documentary is great at just making making great arguments in a beautiful way. And that's yeah. what we're excited to do. Awesome. I think right now, I mean, again, I, I don't think the traditional Latin mass is the silver bullet to fix the crisis in the church right now, but it's one of them. And it's one of the key ones. So whatever we can do to promote it, and you're going to watch this with your family. So, I mean, I think, you know, we're all at different places financially, but if everyone watching could give 50 bucks and say, hey, mm -hmm. this is our movie night coming up, we're going to invest and watch this beautiful, gorgeous film and then push it out to a wider audience. To me, that's reasonable. I love it. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> yeah. Say yeah. more, please. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it needs to be beautiful. And I, I love the fact that it's not just liturgy. I love the fact that you're including stories and interviews because, th th like you said, that is disarming. And people do need to hear that testimony of how, like you and I kind of let off in the beginning of, of this interview of how it is that we as fathers, as married men, became attracted to the traditional Latin mass and how that affects our, our marriages and our family and, and ultimately how we worship and, and, and know Jesus Christ as the son of God, as our saviors.